Hey guys, Miss Marusa here, and in this video, we're going to talk about determining empirical and molecular formulas when instead of being given percent composition data, I'm instead given reaction information, specifically information about a combustion process. So this kind of problem would typically be involving some sort of hydrocarbon, either with just carbons and hydrogens, or sometimes our hydrocarbon would also include oxygen. It could even include something like nitrogen. It just depends on what kind of organic compound you have. And so what we want to remember is that anytime I'm burning a hydrocarbon, when I burn it, I react it with oxygen, O2, and that would yield both CO2 and H2O. And so in these problems, what they're going to give us is the amount of CO2 and H2O that was produced from the burning of our unknown hydrocarbon. And from that information, they want us to figure out our formula of our hydrocarbon. So we're going to have to get kind of creative on how we're getting that carbon and hydrogen information. So let's kind of jump into a problem and I'll talk about the steps as we go through it. So it says here, hey, we're going to be using oxalic acid. It contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And what they give us here is the grams of oxalic acid that we have. So the grams of the entire um, compound that we're reacting. And they tell us that we're going to have 0.501 grams of CO2 as well as 0.103 grams of H2O that result from that burning process. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of start to lay out that information. So I'm going to start off by actually writing out my whole entire reaction. So I don't know oxalic acid's formula, but I know it's some carbon combination of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. I'm going to be burning it in O2 to yield some number of CO2s and H2Os. Now I can't put um, coefficients to balance this because I don't have enough information, but this at least helps me to kind of lay out process-wise what's going on here. Um, so I had 0 0.513 grams of this guy. I had 0.501 grams of CO2, and then I had 0.103 grams of the water. So I want to kind of make some observations here about the information that I have. I see that to solve this empirical formula, I typically need how much carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen I have in here. Well, all of the carbon from this compound is all going to end up in this CO2. So by analyzing how many grams of carbon come from this CO2, I can assume that all of those ended up in this compound originally. Same thing goes for the hydrogen. All of the hydrogen that was in this hydrocarbon ended up in this water here. Okay. So what that means is out of this 0.103 grams of water, if I can figure out how many grams of hydrogen were in that, again, that would all be present in this 0.513 grams. So what I'm going to do first on step A is determine the mass of carbon in the 0.513 grams of oxalic acid. Well, to do that, what they're really wanting us to do is to figure out how much carbon was in the CO2. Okay, so I'm actually going to kind of rewrite this. So I am going to label my parts. It's always important when, you know, you're doing a free response question that's not already labeled to label your parts. And I'm going to figure out how many grams of carbon are in the 0.501 grams of CO2. Now, we talked about in an earlier video, there's multiple ways to solve this. However, I see them going between the mass of a compound and the mass of an element inside of it. So I'm going to set up a mass-mass ratio. To me, that's the easiest way of doing this. And so since grams of um, carbon dioxide are on top, I would put grams of the carbon dioxide on the bottom. And I'm going into grams of carbon. Um, to set this up, I do a molar mass comparison. Um, carbon dioxide is 12.01 for the carbon, 16 times 2 for the oxygen, so that gets a total molar mass of 44.01 for the CO2. Out of that, there was only one carbon at 12.01, so I would have 12.01 grams of carbon per the 
44.01 grams of carbon dioxide. Again, there's other ways to set up this particular math. You could do a mole ratio, you could do a percent composition. I just feel like that this is by far the easiest way and you only have to do one step. Uh, this step gets an answer of 0 0.137 grams of carbon. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the same thing for step B which wants us to determine the mass of hydrogen in the 0.513 grams of oxalic acid. Again, I can't do that directly, but I can figure out how much hydrogen came from the water and however much was in the water would have been in the oxalic acid. So I'm trying to figure out here how many grams of hydrogen in 0 0.103 grams of H2O. And again, to do this, I'm gonna set up a mass to mass ratio here, comparing the grams of water to the grams of hydrogen inside of it. Um, I know water off the top of my head's molar mass is 18.02. That's probably one you're familiar with as well. Out of that 18.02, there were two hydrogens in there at 1.01 a piece. So don't forget to put 1.01 times two, or you could just go ahead and put 2.02 there, okay? And so then I'm gonna calculate what that equals. That gets a value of 0.0115 grams of hydrogen. All right, so now the third one is kind of tricky. C asks us to determine the mass of oxygen in 0.513 grams of oxalic acid. Um, so to do that, we kind of have to get a little sneaky. Um, I've had some people in the past say, well, couldn't I just figure out how much oxygen's here and how much oxygen is there? And then I can add that up to figure out the oxygen here. Well, the problem is, is that I also had oxygen from the air that I was burning. So unfortunately, the total here equals the total of these two, but because I don't know this oxygen individually, I can't really do it that way. However, if I remember that this 0.513 grams is from a combination of the carbon, the hydrogen, and the oxygen, if I know the carbon and the hydrogen, I should be able to just subtract those off and get how much of that mass came specifically from oxygen. So that's how we're gonna do this step. So for part C, what I would do is I would take this 0 0.513 grams of the whole compound and I would subtract off the 0 0.137 grams that came from just carbon. I would also subtract off the 0 0.0115 grams that came from just hydrogen. And then that value there would get me the oxygen that was in that compound. Uh, that value ends up 0 0.365. All right, so now that I have those, now what they ask us to do is to determine the empirical formula of oxalic acid. Now, normally, if I have um, percent mass um, numbers, I would do the mass percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by smallest, multiply to whole. And I'm still going to do those step, steps, except that because I have a mass to mass to mass ratio, I don't need to do a percent to mass step. That step is not gonna be necessary. So the next step that I would do is the mass to mole step. So I'm gonna write down my three elements. I had carbon and hydrogen and oxygen here. Carbon was 0 0.137 grams. I'm do my 12.01 grams to one mole of the carbon. Get a number there. My hydrogen, 0 0.0115. So again, I'm just using the masses from up here. And then I'm doing my mass to mole step. 1.01 grams of hydrogen to one mole of hydrogen. And same thing here on oxygen, 0 0.365 grams of oxygen. So I'd have um, 16 grams for every one mole. And as a reminder on this step, when you do the mass to mole step, don't, don't shortchange yourself on your numbers. You wanna show at least four sig figs here. If not more, more never hurts, okay? Um, so my numbers here end up being 0 0.011407, then 0 0.01138, and 0 0.02281. Okay, so 
did the math small. The next step would be to divide by the smallest. Um, I see out of these that the 0 0.01138 ends up being the smallest. So I'm going to divide each of them by that number. And again, on this step, if they do come out really, really close to a whole number, then I can assume them to be that whole number, which luckily for us, they do come out to be that here. Um, this comes out to one, one, and two. Again, really close to that. Like this guy comes out to be almost exactly one, just a couple hundredths off. So we are allowed to do that rounding. So what that means is that my empirical formula for this compound ends up being one carbon, one hydrogen, and two oxygens. Woohoo. All right, last but not least here. It says, hey, if the molar mass of the acid is 90.04 grams per mole, what is the molecular formula for oxalic acid? Meaning they're asking us, hey, what is the actual formula of this compound? So this is again where I wanna compare my molar masses. So I would first need to figure out what the molar mass of this guy here is. So I would add up the 12.01 of carbon, 1.01 of hydrogen, and two times 16 of oxygen. Uh, that gets a molar mass of 45.02 grams per mole. So if I want to figure out what the molecular formula is, I would want to figure out how many times does this fit into uh, the actual molar mass of 90.04. And I see 90.04 divided by 45.02. I think you see where this is going gives us a multiplier of two. So what that means for part E, so squeeze this in here, my molecular formula would end up being two carbons, two hydrogens, and two times two, four oxygens. So this is the actual formula for oxalic acid. All right, hopefully that kind of made sense from start to finish. I know that was a little bit different than the other empirical molecular formula ones we've done so far. Um, there is another one on the next page. So what I want you to do right now is to pause the video and go ahead and go see if you can try it out and I'll put the answer key on here in just a moment. So again, pause the video, go try it out. Did you pause it? Did you go try it out? Hopefully you did, because all I'm doing is putting the answers up here. Okay, so here is the one for the next page. So it had a hydrocarbon. This one didn't have oxygen in the sample, so you didn't have to worry about that. So part A, you should have got 1.20 grams of carbon. Uh, part B, you should have got 0 0.303 grams of hydrogen. So that told you your carbon to hydrogen ratio. You didn't have to worry about oxygen on this one. So then to solve your empirical formula, you would do your mass to moles and then divide by the smallest. That got you a ratio of one to three. So your empirical formula should have been CH3. You would then find that molar mass and compare it to the actual one. When you divide those, you end up getting a multiplier of two. That gets your molecular formula to be C2H6, which if you remember anything about naming and formula writing, two carbons means you have F as a prefix and an as your ending. So that formula should have been F-A. All right, hope that helps. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Bye, guys.